For years now, Polycam was the go-to app if you wanted to 3D scan an object with your phone. The past year or so though, I've been hearing more and more good things about Kiri Engine. Initially, I didn't pay attention because all of these uh, scanning apps, at least on the iOS side, use Apple's Object Capture API, so they all give you pretty much the same result. So there was no real incentive for me to give Kiri Engine a try. Last week though, I stumbled on one of Kiri Engine's uh, blog posts where they specifically talk about the app's ability to output really high polygon counts. I know it's all just marketing, but I was intrigued enough to give it a try, just to see how well Kiri Engine can compete against Polycam. So let's have a closer look. The plan is to focus only on the photogrammetry features of Polycam and Kiri Engine. Both apps offer Gaussian splatting as well, but splatting has a very limited use case when it comes to 3D asset creation, so for me at least, it's not something incredibly useful. But if you want me to explore that a little bit more, let me know and I can run some tests on another video. Now, let's see how we can test the photogrammetry capabilities of Polycam and Kiri Engine in a fair manner. The best way to approach this is by using the exact same data. That eliminates all variables because both apps will be using the same number of photos, the exact same angles, and of course, the same lighting. And since we want to see the maximum quality Polycam and Kiri Engine can offer, I'll use my camera to take the photos instead of my phone. Later on, I will also test the apps by snapping pictures with a phone, but let's first establish a clear baseline and then we can deviate from that. As a first test, I decided to go with this chocolate croissant. I shot 108 images in total. Both apps allow for a maximum of 200 shots, so 108 is a good enough middle ground. I first captured the croissant on top of a glass because it was very easy to set up, but it turned out it was a bit problematic for Kiri Engine. But let's start with Polycam first. Polycam did a good job overall. We have a nice high res 8K texture and a good enough mesh. We don't have a staggering amount of detail, but that has to do mainly with the amount of images used. If we want to go for ultra details, we need more images than just these 108. This can though is enough to create a good looking asset. Of course, we'll have to clean up the texture and the mesh to get there, but out of the box we have a good starting point. Now let's see Kiri's results. As I mentioned already, Kiri had some issues figuring out the form. As you can see, there's a big hole on the side of the croissant and there's also some fused black elements there too. I did not expect to get this kind of result, but on the plus side, this implies that Kiri is probably using a different solution than Apple's Object Capture API. Just to make sure though, I ran the scan through PhotoCatch, which uses Apple's API. And just like Polycam, there were no issues there. As a matter of fact, the result is very similar to Polycam's. But geometry issues aside, it looks like Kiri is capturing more details. Kiri's mesh has almost double the amount of polygons compared to Polycam. Polycam has almost half a million polygons, and Kiri has 1.2 million. Photocatch sits in the middle of the two with 800,000 polygons. Does that mean that we see double the amount of detail with Kiri's mesh? As you can see, no, not really, but there seems to be some more detail there. Whether that's usable detail or just a little bit more noise is up for debate, but overall I do prefer how Kiri's geometry looks zoomed out. What I don't like though is Kiri's limited texture resolution. With Kiri, we get a single 4K texture. Polycam's texture on the other hand is double that. We get a single 8K texture. In this example, it's difficult to point out the differences, but that's mainly because of the size of the object. Because the croissant is so small, a 4K texture is big enough to capture the necessary details. So in this case, both Kiri and Polycam are giving us results that are quite close in quality. Kiri has more detail in the object's geometry, but Polycam has more detail in the texturing, so things kinda even out. 
but I still wanted to make sure that Kiri could output a full mesh without any issues, so I reshot the croissant by using non-overlapping support. And this time around, Kiri did output a clean mesh. What's interesting to note here is that now the models are much closer in polygon count. Polycam's uh, output is 1.2 million polys, and Kiri's 1.6. Photocatch gave me the highest number of the two, which was 1.9 million. As you can see though, polycount doesn't mean much. Kiri still looks like it has more geometry detail overall. But that's when we check the model from some distance. When we zoom in, the extra details on Kiri's model looks more like noise rather than anything else. Either way though, both Polycam and Kiri models look really good, but I would still go for the Polycam model because of the higher resolution texture. We just have more data to work with. And you'll see the importance of that in this next test. This time around, I'm using the iPhone's cameras to grab the images, and I'm also using the individual apps to go through the scanning process, just to see what each app has to offer. Of course, here we will have some more variance in the quality because there's no way for me to reproduce exactly the same angles and camera position, but I try to be as consistent as possible. And in both apps, I used the same amount of photos. In this case, it was 91. Polycam did a great job capturing both the texture and the surface of the rock. The mesh is just shy of 700k and the texture is once more 8k in resolution. Now, if we check Kiri's result, we can see that Kiri did a great job capturing a lot of detail when it comes to geometry. Kiri's mesh is close to 3.4 million polygons, which is quite impressive. But here's where things fall apart. Like before, Kiri's model uses a 4K texture, so if we enable that, we can immediately see the problems with that approach. The rock looks incredibly blurry. There's not much detail there. In comparison, Polycam's texture looks incredibly sharp, and detailed. No matter what I tried, Kiri always exported one 4K texture. That's in stark contrast to Polycam, where it can export multiple 8K textures. That depends on the amount of detail captured. I even tried to re-export the Kiri model just to get rid of the unnecessary surrounding geometry. I was hoping that this would leave enough space on the texture for the rock. Unfortunately though, the result wasn't much different the texture was still quite blurry, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. I would say this is Kiri's Achilles heel, and it's something the development team has to fix. Without high resolution textures, the objects coming out of the app have very limited use. For a good scan, we need both high resolution geometry and textures. Let me now show you another scan where the issue is even more pronounced. This time around, I used 200 images, which is the maximum Kiri Engine allows, and like our first test, the images are exactly the same in both apps. I used the iPhone's camera to take the pictures, and I also used Pro Raw for maximum quality. In this instance, Polycam uses 5 8K textures, and it makes a huge difference. Because of these 5 textures, we have so much more detail to work with. If we now switch to Kiri, we can immediately see the difference. The single 4K texture is just not enough. The difference is night and day. Which is disappointing because geometry-wise, Kiri does a great job capturing all the details. It even managed to create some basic surfaces in the areas Polycam left empty. Another interesting thing to point out here is that Kiri's mesh is 6 million polygons, while Polycam's is almost half that. The geometry quality though is not that different. Either way though, all of these scans are enough for us to see a trend. Kiri consistently outputs higher geometry objects that have a little bit more detail, but when it comes to textures, it just falls flat. But it's not just the quality of the scans where Kiri suffers. Overall, the app is a bit rough around the edges. For example, if we don't enable the save raw data option as we're saving the object, we're kinda screwed. Without it, we don't have the ability to reprocess the scan, which means that we're stuck with whatever resolution we picked for this scan. We also lose the ability to export our photos to use with another app. 
And it's very easy to make that mistake because A, the option is disabled by default, and B, it's really easy to miss as you're rushing through the scanning process. Here's two of the scans I already showed you. The one with the drive icon has the option enabled and the other one has it disabled. So if we go to the one with the option enabled, we can reprocess the scan and we can also save the photos in our library. Both options are incredibly hidden, but at least they're there. If we go to the other scan, none of these options exist. Polycam, on the other hand, is a lot more flexible. It stores the data by default, so we can rework our scans at whatever point. We can export a higher resolution scan, we can export the photos, we can even get rid of problematic images if for some reason the scan fails. And then there's the issue with Kiri's lens limitations. With Kiri, we can only use iPhone's main lens, which limits us in the amount of detail we can capture. With Polycam, we don't have that restriction. We can even use the macro option, which allows us to get closer to our subject if we have to. Another weird thing with the Kiri is that for some reason audio is disabled the moment you use the app. So let's say that you're listening to a podcast as you're trying to scan an object. The audio will completely stop until you switch to another app. There's no reason for a scanning app to take over the audio. Of course, with Polycam, this issue does not exist. There's a lot of these little annoyances that take away points from Kiri Engine. Most of them can be circumvented. For example, we can use the regular camera app to shoot the photos and then upload them for processing. Others though cannot be circumvented at all. For example, the 4K texture limitation. So I would say all in all, Polycam is the better option. And it kind of makes sense because it's the app that has had the longest time to develop and improve. That doesn't mean that Polycam is perfect. Some things still annoy me, mainly the way the UI behaves. And in some cases, the service has gotten worse. For example, I was almost certain that Polycam was much faster when it came to deliverables. But I don't use the app often, so I wasn't sure if I was just misremembering. So when I saw scans taking 20 minutes or even more to output, I was quite surprised. It wasn't until I went back to my old review of the app when I realized that I wasn't crazy. The scan didn't take long to process. After maybe two or three minutes, the object showed up in my library. So it looks like Polycam probably reduced the processing resources used per scan, which is a shame really because the cost for the app has increased quite considerably. Last year, when I used the app, I paid eight euros to get the monthly plan. Now, just a year later, that plan costs 18 euro. That's more than double the price. And of course, that means that the competition will follow the leader. Kiri also costs 18 euro per month, and the processing time is also quite similar. So <laughs> where does that leave us? Well, if you have to choose between Polycam and Kiri Engine, Polycam is the better option. But I would say at this price point, none of these options are enticing. If you're on a Mac, just go for the desktop version of PhotoCatch. It's free and it outputs better results than Polycam. And if you're using a PC, just go with Reality Capture. You will get amazing results for better prices. So <laughs> yeah, I know the solution to use other software might not be what you're looking for, but it's certainly the better option. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And as always, if you want to go through the models, I'll have them up on my Patreon page. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.